Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're showcasing a setup that is probably nicer than anything we own. This is a setup focused around content creation. It'll allow you to do some video editing, live streaming, and a bunch of other stuff. And we're gonna show you exactly how well it works. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, the online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. With Windows 10, it is so easy just to go onto the website using the link in the description down below, and then go to the Windows 10, click buy it now, add code TB20, then go to the checkout, put in your payment info, and then boom, you will get within a few seconds or a few minutes an activation code that you will go into Windows 10, put in the activation code, and it is fully legit. It will work out of the box, and you will have a fully activated Windows 10 license. We use GVG Mall for all the PCs we built here at the Toasty Bros, and so should you. So definitely check the link in the description down below and use code TB20 to save money on checkout. So whether you're new or not to the channel, just to do a quick explanation, this is basically a full streaming setup, which includes a webcam, a headset, of course, a monitor, a very special monitor. We have lighting, we got an actual microphone, keyboard, mouse, mouse mat, computer, basically all the essentials to do gaming, plus a little bit extra. And one thing we do want to disclaim real quick is this is over $4,000 worth of stuff, including the PC. Now, do we recommend actually doing this if you're just starting? Not really. I mean, unless you just have a lot of money lying around and uh, you think you're really gonna make a career out of this, then uh, don't necessarily spend this much. But you know, whether you're ready to become a, a bigger thing, you know, and you've been doing this for a while, you know, you got your cheap setup and you're ready to upgrade, then uh, maybe this is worth it for you. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is talk about this PC, which is in the new 5000T from Corsair. Special thanks again to them for making this build possible. Talk about the specs again if you haven't seen this video, but definitely check out the video if you haven't. And then go over the entire peripheral set, which is a lot of different stuff that makes it an ultimate creator setup. Let's just do that. All right guys, so now for this gargantuan PC. So this is actually, like Matt said, in the brand new Corsair 5000T, which is a really nice airflow case that comes with all kinds of RGB. We got RGB on the hood, we got RGB on the front panel, there's even RGB on the bottom. I mean, you literally get RGB everywhere and it also comes with some of their IQ fans. We obviously had to go the extra mile and load up some more fans into it. So we actually have this really nice like black and white fan color scheme going on here. Honestly, it was not coordinated, but kind of looks pretty cool. And then we added some nice Bit Phoenix uh, power extensions here to go to the actual graphics card into the 24 pin. The graphics card is an RTX 3060 Ti from Gigabyte and it's obviously a very nice Aurora so we got to have some RGB on it. Under this Corsair 100 we have a 12600K which is an i5 10 core 16 threaded processor. I mean you could go with the i7, you could go with the i9 but this is known as being one of the best processors in the market right now in terms of content creation and gaming because it is just so good for the price and then check out that RAM. That's some Corsair Dominator Plat and that is clocked in at 5200 megahertz which surprisingly is one of the lowest uh, speeds you could actually get on DDR5 so I mean hey you could go all the way up to like 6400 plus megahertz if you want to Corsair does offer it we have this really nice Asus ROG Strix Z690e and obviously you don't really get much higher in than that um, that's probably about a $400 motherboard so uh, yeah we definitely like it though we've used it many times especially in these hard times to get DDR5 we also have a new team group, Cardia, one terabyte Gen 4 SSD. So you get those blazing fast Gen 4 speeds, but hey, Gen 5's coming out soon. Maybe it'll be out by the time this video releases. I don't know, but these boards do support Gen 5, so could do that if you wanted to. We also have an Corsair H150i, which is a beautiful 360 millimeter AIO that uses all the IQ software to work nicely with everything here. And then for the power supply, we have this Corsair RM850, which is a fully modular 80 plus gold, absolutely beautiful power supply. And look at that, it has the Corsair logo on it. It looks very nice instead of a Corsair case. It'd be kind of wrong to go with something else at this point, honestly. And lastly, we have this Elgato Camlink Pro, which actually allows for four HDMI in, so you could have multiple cameras. Cause I mean, sometimes one just isn't enough, but we're actually not really gonna be utilizing that today. I know a lot of you guys are like, well, why is it in there? Because honestly, if you're going to become a streamer, you're gonna be a YouTuber, you're gonna be doing a lot of things. I mean, we have them in a couple computers here because we know how useful they are. So you might as well just go ahead and add it while you're at it, because that is four more devices that you can actually to capture onto this beautiful setup. Now, first up with the monitor, we have an ultra wide here today, and I'm reading the model number off that box over there because it is ridiculous. It is the Viotech GNV34DBE2. 
That's an insane model number, but this is a 3440 by 1440, 144 hertz monitor. Ultra wides are really cool for content creation because it's great for multitasking. As you'll see in Premiere Pro, you get all that timeline space to do video editing, and it's not the best for streaming, but we'll show you a use case where an ultra wide actually makes some sense for live streaming if you're gonna be doing that sort of thing. And in terms of the peripherals, well, these are all peripherals, but we're gonna go ahead and talk about these peripherals. This right here is the Corsair K70 Pro. Yeah, RGB Pro. It comes with Cherry MX red switches. I'll go ahead and pop this one off for you. Look at that. Look at that red switch, nice and linear. All the RGB you could ever ask. It has this little display right here, which Jackson and I were convinced was a touchscreen, but little do we know, it's just an on-screen display to show when you have like caps lock and things muted and things like that. But yeah, it's the Corsair K70, you know and love, but upgraded just a little bit more. In terms of the mouse, we have the Corsair Sabre Pro RGB wireless, which again is a wireless mouse. Look at that, there's no cables right here. But this is an awesome mouse for, well, gaming, FPS gaming. We've got two buttons on the side and that little RGB logo, because it's not a Corsair product if it doesn't have RGB, duh. So we got that going right there. Now in terms of what this entire setup is sitting on, this is the MM500 desk mat, which would for pretty much any desk will cover the entire surface. So if you're looking for something like that, definitely consider picking this thing up. And look at this right here. We have a Wave 3 microphone, which is a really awesome microphone, really awesome sound quality, which we will be testing in streaming and also just some general voiceover stuff and audacity to show different use cases. Has a built-in mute, which we're not gonna be using because you'll see some of this other stuff that we have. Um, on the desk as well, we have the good old Stream Deck, which I did program a couple of things to be able to open up Premiere. Inside the here, you can change the scenes, open up OBS. There's a lot of stuff you can do with the Stream Deck. This is the Mark II version with a slight modification with this nice stand. It looks pretty cool if you ask me. And uh, yeah, the Stream Deck, you guys know, is an awesome tool for content creation. And our video editor, McAllister, uses it a ton for a lot of stuff that he does in Premiere. And uh, if you're streaming or whatever, Stream Deck is definitely a good thing to use in your setup. What we have right here for the webcam, I'm just going all over the place here. This is the Elgato face cam, which again, you don't have to get the face cam if you're gonna use that Cam Link Pro. You can use a DSLR or some other camera that you're using for your normal content creation. Plug it into the Cam Link Pro and you're good to go. But we want to include the face cam because it's nice to just have a standalone camera on your setup. And the face cam, in my opinion, is like the best looking webcam on the market right now. Absolutely clean, really, really like it. And in terms of making that webcam look good, we have these key light minis. I think they're called the key light minis. Yeah, key light minis. Um, they are portable key lights, actually. They can run off a of power on your PC, which we have set up right here on USB-C, but they can actually run off a of battery too. Let me show you that. Ugh still on, it's still on. <laughs> Look at that, it's really cool. Actually gonna be keeping one of these for some video stuff here at the office, but it has these controls on here so you can turn up the brightness. He's ready, to, he's ready to get blind. Here he goes. Turn up the brightness, you got the power button, and uh, yeah, there's actually magnets on it too. Let's see if I can stick it somewhere. You on the side here? Look at that. Ooh, magnets, really cool. We'll go ahead and put that back so we uh, you know, don't blind ourselves anymore. We have two different scenarios for how these lights can be used. One is just portable. You can just stick it wherever you want. And this right here is just on a basic light stand that you can pick up off of Amazon for a really cheap price. Boom, there you go. In terms of the headset, this is a headset I use pretty much every single day here at the office. This is the HS80 wireless headset. Very comfortable, in my opinion, one of the most comfortable headsets on the market. Has a built-in microphone if you need to use that, but obviously we got the Wave 3, so you don't really need to go that route. But once again, look at all this Corsair stuff. It's absolutely beautiful. And there's something under the desk that we forgot to mention. I didn't forget to mention, I was actually just gonna get to it. Saving it for life. That is the Elgato Stream Deck pedal, which we have programmed to do mute in OBS. You can program for a lot of different things, um, but we wanted to showcase it as another option to add another set of like programmable uh, functions to your setup. This thing is incredibly programmable, incredibly customizable. As a content creator, that's what you want. If you're someone who wants to make the most efficient possible setup, again, we don't have it super programmed here right now, but the sky's the limit really with this whole setup. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is test a couple things. We're gonna do some Premiere Pro video editing. We're gonna load up a project and see what we got going on there. We're also gonna be doing some live streaming and show you how you can live stream from an ultra wide. And then we're gonna do some audio tests through Audacity just to show you the versatility of this setup and how that microphone sounds. So let's just get right into it. This has been a struggle. We are running Apex Legends Arenas. We're on medium settings, um, whatever crazy. What uh, resolution is this? This again? is 3440 by 1440. So pretty much 4K. Um, actually, is that over? It's basically extended 1440p. Yeah. So it's in between like 4K and 1440. So we're, we're, we're getting pretty up there with, uh, I guess we're gonna, we're gonna play Bangalore. But yeah, 144 FPS right now in the menu. Can we maintain it in the game? 
Yeah, what we're gonna be doing is testing it right now on the native resolution. Then we're gonna do a quick test where we drop it down to like a 1600, not 1600 by 900, a 16 by nine aspect ratio, like 1080p or something like that, and show you how you can game at 16 by nine and have a better streaming experience if you don't want those black bars that you're seeing right now. I'll tell you what they do, you can literally see the world with this monitor. Why did the audio just cut out? Hey. I don't like cut out for like one second there and it had me worried, but it hasn't cut out since then. <laughs> Got some extra <laughs> did, did, did you peep that, dude? Hey. I, 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 I know you saw that. He hit that. that Ooh. Nice. That nice. I didn't like how that wraith, like I, I heard her and I was like, there's no way she's just sitting here. Yeah, guys, it's streamable. As you can tell from the footage, it works in ultra wide, but we're gonna go to a firing range real quick, drop the resolution down to normal 1080p just to show you what it looks like if you want to stream in window mode. Okay, as you can see now, you can play and stream like this, theoretically. It's not the most ideal, and sometimes in some games, you're not gonna take advantage of the full high refresh rate when you do this, but it, it technically works if you really wanted to have a normal stream, as you can see right now, and not have to worry about those black bars, and have the ability of having two monitors. And have the ability to do epic freaking twisties. It can be well, a real gamer still, like this. I was like, we can still hit shot. Wait, 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 wait we, we, can, can't, we can't hit those? Whoop, whoop. We can't. Whoop. Uh, well, yeah, it works. Yeah, but it works. You just can't make it any bigger in some games. So that part kind of sucks, but you know that's what we just recommend. Get a second monitor. Second monitor, Spend so you don't have to worry about this. You've already spent four grand on this. <laughs> Spend even more. All right, let's go to some other applications. All right, guys. Now the next thing. All right, here we go. All right, guys, on the next thing we're gonna show you is how it works in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, we connected to our uh, video editing NAS and we now have access to a project that McAllister has worked on. This is the Amazon versus Newegg project, which in all honesty is probably the most like demanding like project that we work on in terms of like how crazy the track ends up being. A lot of different cuts, a lot of different things going on here. Don't have all the animations because you know, McAllister doesn't like to save stuff to the NAS. You know, you're seeing this right now, McAllister, and you don't like to save stuff to the NAS, but um, we do have still the main basis of the video, a couple of the animations that he has done, and all the 4K footage from our GH5. And the scrubbing is pretty good. It's pretty quick on playback. Here, honestly, when you're... And there's a lot of different file types working that. here. We have the um, GH5 the... footage, we have some gameplay footage of when we played Bean Battles, and we have all these different effects going on here, and it works really well. And I do like, as you can see right here, how much real estate you have with this ultra wide monitor. You can see this entire timeline, which normally, you know, let's just go ahead and shrink it down just to show you guys. I would say this is close to a 16 by nine. This is what you'd be looking at. You can't see everything at once, but in full, look at that. You can see all this stuff. Single display works absolutely amazing for, Mir for Premiere Pro. And the performance of this PC is actually pretty solid as well. So you really don't have any real issues when you're doing some video editing. And here's Jackson being Jackson. Issue, so. And there's this me. This is the one time it actually has And we're issue. looking great. We're looking lovely. But uh, yeah, everything looks great. This whole timeline is within view. So I'd say Premiere Pro is definitely a success. Um, I will go ahead and do a quick render and just just get a little estimate on what the render time's gonna be um, because, well, it is missing some files. But when you do hardware encoding, which uses the 3060 Ti, we're looking at a normal bit rate of, let's just say 45 here. And then we'll just go ahead and do a little test render just to see the estimated time. Call it test. Scroll this back and export. It's gonna try, it's gonna try its hardest. I mean, look, those render times for a video that is over 20 minutes, pretty, pretty good. Looks like it'll probably take about 14 to 15 minutes. It's it's going up there a little bit. Oh God, it's going, it's going higher. It's going higher. But yeah, really render times are not that important anymore. Uh, most of the time, any sort of hardware encoder is gonna render a lot faster than the actual length of the video. So you're pretty much good there. Um, but you wanna have that really, really good timeline scrubbing to be able to edit and then just let it, leave it to render. This thing is gonna render anywhere between like 20 to 15 minutes. Not gonna wait for this entire thing to go, but this PC is more than capable. We'll switch 
to another application real quick. Okay guys, and the last thing we have right here is Audacity. Really, we're just showing you that with this microphone, the Wave 3, you can do some really good voiceovers, some really good post-production like audio stuff. Um, I don't think this is actually gonna work. I'm just gonna hit record and see what happens. This might totally break everything. If it does, Calister has the audio for my lavalier to switch to, but we're gonna go ahead and record. Hello, hello, it seems to be working. Um, we can go ahead and talk into here, blah, 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 talking into the Wave microphone. Yeah, and then you can go in here and you go to effects and you can make my voice sound really weird. That's some, uh, not repeat, let's not do that. Let's go through and add some uh, reverb dampening. I'm just gonna max it out. I didn't record. Hello, hello. It seems to be working. Um, <laughs> it sounds. Like, it sounds like he's in a concert. It sounds. It sounds like I'm in like a bathroom. But uh, yeah, there you go. Audacity. Just another quick example to show you that this Wave 3 microphone is very capable. You can do a lot of stuff with it. And really, this whole setup is just a setup that you can do a lot of different stuff with. Whether it's Photoshop, Premiere Pro, some game streaming, things like that. That's the main reason why we did this one. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, we just got done doing some content creation. We did Audacity, we did some video editing. Of course, we had to test out OBS with some live streaming and some on-site recording. And the best part about this whole setup is it is fully expandable. We already have all of this Corsair IQ product that can honestly take even more. I mean, we haven't even maxed out that software yet, so let's keep adding stuff to it. And of course, all the Elgato products, you got the face cam, the microphone, the lights and everything, all works very well together with the Stream Deck and the pedal. A lot of stuff to make your content creation that much easier and allow you to take your content to the next level. So if you're a content creator out there looking to replicate this setup, links in the description down below will be affiliate links and it will help us out. Big thanks to Corsair slash Elgato for sending a bunch of stuff over for this project. And big thanks to Viotech. They actually sent this monitor over a long time ago and I hope you're happy that we actually used it. <laughs> So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. Hey, if you want to buy this setup and similar setups or just a gaming PC, we got all of it over at our PC selling business. PCBros.tech is where we sell gaming PCs like this, a bunch of different gaming PCs, gaming laptops, so we can even customize gaming PCs specifically for you with our build custom consultation. Yeah, that. Check it out on our website, PCBros.tech. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.